In this episode of Electric Moped Emporium, I show you step by step how I build my new 60 mile an hour bolt-on EV conversion kits for Tomos mopeds. Starting with raw steel, I take you every step of the way of fabrication, including installation and test ride. We got a lot of information to cover in this one boys, so let's get right into it. I'm starting here with some plans based on prior builds. And I wanted to build a jig this time because I'm going to be making dozens or more of these things. So I need to have a way to reproduce them consistently. I cut my pieces of tube steel down to the proper length. As you can see, I'm still using an angle grinder to cut everything. Plan to upgrade that when I can to a plasma cutter. And then here I'm marking and drilling the holes for where it's going to mount to the frame. Get everything laid out here and uh, make sure it's all even. And then I clamp these two together while I cut out the uh, dropouts. And then I cut little notches here and this allows me to put it in the vise and bend it to the proper angles. I kind of lay everything out and just eyeball everything until it's perfect as far as the angles go. And then I tack those little slits back together uh, to retain the rigidity. Once I've got everything right, I go ahead and screw the uh, blocks into place to hold everything in position. And then I weld everything together. I'm using a flux core MIG welder, so it's pretty messy, uh, but the welds are very strong. They turn out looking pretty good. Now I'm drilling the holes for the shock mounts and then cutting out the uh, shock mount and welding it into place here uh, while the bike kind of falls into my lap here. And now I've got the brake caliper and the shock mounts all welded to the swing arm. I go ahead and cap the ends in and then hit it with a flapper disc just to get everything kind of smoothed out and ready for paint. While the paint dries on our completed swing arm, let's turn our attention over to building the pedal bracket. So we're going to start out here with our plate steel cut to the proper shape. This is again based on prior um, EV conversions that I've done on Tomoses. And I've got the holes drilled for the motor mount bolts. And what I'm screwing together right now is actually electrical conduit I got from Lowe's. And it happens to be the perfect inner diameter for the pedal crankshafts that come off of uh, almost all mopeds. But specifically, Pook Magnum is what I'm using for this one. So now I'm just kind of pounding in my uh, pieces of cut tube steel. And again, these are going to be the tunnels where the original motor mount bolts allow this pedal bracket to be mo mounted where the motor used to be. So we get these kind of finger tightened in place. And as you can see, the tubes kind of stick up. Now this is going to slide inside the frame, um, again, where the original engine used to mount. So you want this part to be very smooth. Uh, so I go ahead and hit that with the flapper disc and get everything nice and smoothed out. Here I've got a few of them assembled and we're ready for the next phase, which involves cutting a two inch tube in half. And I make this cap that I weld in place. Um, this all lines up with the OEM body frame. You'll see when I mount it on the bike in here in a minute. Um, now I'm cutting down the crankshafts to the proper length so that everything is as tight to the bike as it can be, but also comfortable for you to rest your feet on while you ride. We've got them all laid out here, ready for paint. Everything's kind of been flapper disc and polished up. But first let's weld in our crank set. We cut it down to the length and now we uh, go ahead and just weld that on. We're never going to take this apart. And here we go, all painted up and completed uh, with the nice chrome uh, Pook Magnum crank set installed in it. And that's it for our pedal bracket. Now we're ready to move on to modifying our OEM tank. So I start off by masking the areas that I want to remove. What I'm going to do here is create a lid that hinges open and locks closed. So first I cut off the lid. Then I cut out that interior part of the tank, uh, drill a hole for the lock. These are the latches that catch it. Um, here's how it works. Pretty basic, just like any lock. Left unlocks it and you have access to your battery. And then you turn it right, remove the key and it's locked and your battery is safe and secure. The interior part is uh, where the battery will be housed and also the wiring for the kit. Uh, there's that rubberized edge. That's where all your wiring is going to come through and your controller mounts to the bottom of this tank. And uh, here's a little added touch at the end. Um, I came up with this idea and this will be going on to all the tanks. But it's a uh, just a little sleeker way 
to uh, plug in and charge up instead of having the OEM gas cap now you'll have your uh, charging port right on top of the tank so let's uh, get into the installation here first things first we bolt on our pedal bracket again this goes right where the motor came off of and you'll use your motor mount bolts to bolt this into place so just uh, slide the three bolts through and then just finger tighten the nuts on the back for now the next piece we're going to put on is the swing arm and again you just unbolt your OEM one use that same OEM bolt to bolt on the new swing arm here slide it through and then I like to just go ahead and finger tighten uh, the shock mount bolts in place so that everything's kind of in position and again just finger tighten these for now um, we're just gonna finger tighten everything until we uh, get the motor in place go ahead and put your swing arm bolt on and I go ahead and tighten this in place because we need this to be tight in order to line up the chain so go ahead and place your motor into the swing arm dropouts just slide it up into place and then I like to put on the torque mount now so that the motor can't slide back off while I'm working and again I just finger tighten it uh, starting with the axle bolt and then go ahead and just finger tighten the 10 millimeter retaining nut that holds the torque mount in place once you've got that you'll want to go ahead and place your chain over the pedal bracket sprocket and the hub motor sprocket once those are uh, you know in proper position you're gonna go ahead and slide your link together then install your missing link and make sure it's pushed all the way back and then put your clip in place I like to put it in position here where it's just about to click and then just squeeze it over with some needle nose now to the fun part so I start out with the phase wires uh, your controller bolts to the bottom of your tank it will probably be bolted to it when you receive your kit if not it uh, it bolts right in place on the bottom of the tank you'll see the holes already drilled and go ahead and just match these colors uh, green to green blue to blue yellow to yellow and then your red and black power cables as well and go ahead and just loosely place your tank in position for now let's move on to the controls you have got these little rubber uh, retaining pieces here that you just put on each side of your handlebar clamp and the clamps for the display kind of swing around the bars and then you'll have the little tightening uh, screws to tighten it in place and this is your selector switch uh, it attaches by the same method go ahead and put your brake in position and slide on your grip and now your left side controls are complete get everything in the desired position and you can go ahead and tighten those in place if you'd like this is a camera mount that I was uh, using for the video I actually end up moving that and the right side brake which is your front brake and your throttle get all your wiring together here and uh, organize it so it looks nice and zip tie it in place just so that you know you have the proper amount of slack before you start plugging stuff in um, inside the tank I like to keep these as neat as possible and then you just slide underneath you can see those phase wires popped out pull those back in those are the wires coming from the controller and from the motor to the controller now pull your brake line uh, around like this and you've got these little factory clips down here you can use to retain the brake line um, behind the shock and onto the mount and before you bolt that in just go ahead and retain your uh, brake line so that you know you've got the proper amount of slack and tighten everything down with zip ties on the factory clips 
Once you've got that done, go ahead and tighten your brake caliper in place. And you don't have to crank this down because you may have some minor adjustments to do. And again, with mounting the tank, you've got some pre-drilled holes here. But go ahead and run a pilot hole and then the self-tapping screw to tighten the tank on. And now we're going to focus our attention to the inside of the tank. And now this part people are intimidated by, but it's actually, uh, it looks like a big rat's nest, but it's a lot more simple than it looks. First thing, take your excess wire from your controls, coil it up and zip tie it so you don't have all this wire flying everywhere. And now these are, this is the wiring coming from the controller. Here's your display connector. And everything matches color and nothing will plug into something it doesn't belong to um, for the most part. But just go ahead and check that all your wiring is the correct color and you can always reference this video. That's the throttle wire. That looks like uh, brake controls. Yep. And we're just going through and plugging everything in one by one here. This is your uh, motor controls, your hall sensors. And again, coil everything up, zip tie the excess, keep it as neat as you can inside the uh, tank here. And then next we just have to plug in the battery. This will have a bigger connector um, than the one that was on this kit. But same principle. You'll plug in your battery connector. And then you have the connector running down um, from where we added the port on top of the tank for the charging port. This is the connection for that. And you just go ahead and plug that in. And that's it for the wiring portion. Go ahead and close your tank up. Lock your lid. Close your seat. And then we are ready to turn it on. And when it comes on here, you're going to see it's in the first power level. And you can use your selector switch to go to a higher level if you desire. Hit this button here and you can cycle between the different modes of display. And then you got your throttle here on the right. I mounted the camera in the uh, hole for the charging port so that you can see the speedometer when we go for a little test drive here. So let's go ahead and uh, click up into the highest power mode here and see what this thing can do. So my previous builds were all 48 volt, 1500 watts, and uh, topped out in the 30 mile an hour range. And that's pretty much average moped speed. But it's expensive to convert to EV, and I feel like it should be a significant performance upgrade. So with this kit, I wanted to hit 60 miles an hour. And as you can see, we just did. All the detailed specs are in the description below, but let me give you a quick rundown of what's been upgraded. We are now using a 5 kilowatt V3205H hub motor, a 100 amp Sabaton Bluetooth programmable controller, and a 72 volt 35 amp hour LG battery pack. This kit makes 180 newton meters of torque, which is about 132 foot pounds, which is like a small car. This bike absolutely rips. But it's more than just peak power numbers. The programmable controller also gives you the ability to set your throttle response and sensitivity. You can even customize your braking levels. This has regenerative braking, so you're going to be using the motor to slow the bike, sending current back into the pack, therefore extending your range. As you can see, the bracket kit has also been updated. I've made about a dozen of these kits and have really streamlined the look of it, carrying that body line straight down and giving it a modern look. In addition to the basic conversion kit, I also offer performance upgrades. Things like adjustable rear shocks, hydraulic front forks, front disc brake conversions, lighting kits, luggage racks, seats, just about everything you can imagine. And I plan to be launching a website soon where you can customize your build right there on the site and order it straight to your door. Here's a couple recent kits I've sold installed on the bikes. This is Eric in Denver. He uses his for trail riding. 
and this is Lindsay in Kentucky. She actually uses this to commute to and from work on the highway. So the versatility of the 60 mile an hour kit is really far and above anything I've built before. And I used the same conversion kit to build this 70s Honda Cafe Racer. This thing turned out super sick, so look for that video dropping very soon.